into Guevara. He feeds. Rebound controlled by Davidson. 15 seconds to the championship. Dela says we're number one. Outlet comes. There's no way they can score two goals in 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's All over. All got to do is hold the ball. It's over. We won it. All right. And the Panthers. If you can imagine it, you can achieve it. If you can dream it, you can become it. The Canton Invaders imagined and achieved, dreamt and became the champions of the American Indoor Soccer Association in the league's 1984-85 premier season. With the presentation of the championship trophy, the Invaders culminated one of the most successful seasons in professional sports history. A 31-9 regular season record, a playoff title, and league-leading attendance figures gave Northeastern Ohio the clear message. The Invaders have arrived. Sparked by the vision of the Invaders owners, brothers Steve, Nick, and Gus Paxos, and George Trifilis, the AISA's Canton franchise began its initial campaign surrounded by the skepticism that haunts so many soccer veterans. Ventures. The supreme test was to be administered in the Invaders' home opener on the historic date of November 9th, 1984, which christened the first professional soccer in Canton. That night, 3,098 flocked to the Canton Memorial Civic Center to witness the new entertainment attraction in Canton, and those who had been disbelievers instantly became followers when the Invaders claimed a thrilling 7-6 overtime victory over the Columbus Capitals on this Tim Tima goal. Ignited by the dramatic season opener, the Invaders quickly established themselves as the class of the league, proving their superiority through a mixture of finesse, aggressiveness, and power. The Invaders unleashed a barrage of offensive spark which could strike from almost any part of the field and from any player. In no game was this asset more apparent than Canton's 14-7 route of the Chicago Vultures December 16th. The Invaders raced to a league record 11 goals by halftime and then finished with another league mark of 14. Even reserve Mike Paxos, son of co-owner Nick Paxos, got into the act with this tally. Invaders rarely lacked a flair for offensive excitement, especially when a 19-year-old forward named Kia took charge. With a tiny 5'4", 130-pound frame, Kia possessed the quickness and agility to dart in and out and away from defenders until the perfect opportunity arose to put the ball in the back of the net. Kia delivered a pent-up energy that exploded on the soccer field and resulted in a team-high 49 goals and 25 assists for 74 points. Along the way, he captured the hearts of the Canton fans who swarmed to Kia's charisma. Following closely behind Kia in the scoring column was the player voted the team's most valuable player, forward Art Kramer. Blessed with speed and savvy, Kramer could sear through opponents and then climax his performance with pinpoint shooting. Even when he played on Canton's penalty killing unit, Kramer would tantalize opponents and seize the moment when a scoring chance presented itself. And when he did, the fun bunch would gather to celebrate. Kramer and Kia may have emerged as the scoring pace setters, yet they were just part of the complex design which made the invaders so dangerous. The Canton team wielded such a well-balanced arsenal that the Milwaukee Sentinel likened the Canton invaders to the Space Invaders video game. As soon as you neutralize one of them, the newspaper stated two more threatening to obliterate you. The invaders could strike with the boldness of player assistant coach John Delinsky rifle-like left foot of defender Glenn Irvine, the smoothness of midfielder Don Tobin, the ruggedness of forward Ken Killingsworth, and the opportunistic abilities of midfielder Ken Lola. Yet it wasn't just an offensive explosiveness which brought the invaders their success. Cannon easily led the AISA in defense and sported the best one-two goalkeeper punch in Mike Barbaric and Bill Namofsky, who ranked first and third, respectively, among league goalkeepers. Barbaric was a study in consistency and concentration, providing the invaders with stability in the last line of defense. Namofsky preferred a more spectacular approach, stretching and diving to stop seemingly unstoppable shots. 
With solid goalkeeping in back of them, the defenders could play with confidence. The man named the AISA Defender of the Year, Oscar Pisano, anchored the defensive front, which drew the respect and admiration of the league. By their effectiveness on both offense and defense, the Invaders traveled through the first half of their season with a 14-6 record and a first-place standing. From that enviable position, matters only improved. The Invaders tore through the rest of the schedule by winning 17 of their last 20 games, highlighted by a league record nine consecutive victories and another win streak of six games. With the rest of the league choking in their dust, the Invaders clinched first place on March 10th, nearly a full month before the season ended. With the Invaders' success on the field came the throngs of fans anxious to witness the new sports phenomenon in northeastern Ohio. The crowds of the last two months of the season swelled to an average of nearly 3,000 per game as Canton forged into the league attendance pace. The fans gathered because they believed in the Invaders, they believed in Canton, and they believed in the excitement of indoor soccer. That excitement had enough of an impact in northeastern Ohio to draw the attention of PM Magazine. Dan Coughlin had this to say about the Invaders. When you think of Canton, you think of pro football and the Pro Football Hall of Fame right here off I-77 because this is where the pro game began. Pro football's first great star, Jim Thorpe, played for the Canton Bulldogs. Well, Canton hasn't had much in the way of pro sports since then. Oh, there was a minor league baseball team back in the 40s. But now there's the Canton Invaders of the American Indoor Soccer Association. And we're going to find out more about them right now. I've always liked outdoor soccer, and I like indoor even more. It's a fun sport to watch, and I like it. It's a very exciting game. Uh, it's the greatest thing you have in Canton, right? Professional sports are back in Canton, right here in the Canton Civic Center. These are the Canton Invaders, a new team in a new league called the American Indoor Soccer Association. Just as America's biggest professional outdoor soccer league is collapsing, the AISA is just starting to grow, especially in this Stark County city of 95,000. The other cities in the league are Louisville, Milwaukee, Kalamazoo, Chicago, and Columbus. Right now, the AISA doesn't even pretend to compete on the same level as the older major indoor soccer league, but the new league is giving more Americans a chance to play for pay. Steve Paxos, a Canton food wholesaler, heads up a group of investors that includes his two brothers. He's optimistic as the premier season comes to a close. I've been saying all along that the only enjoyment we get out of this thing is winning games. When we win, you know, I mean, we don't care, you know, how much money we have to spend or what happens. When we lose, everything goes wrong, you know. Soccer Association's premier season ends early next month. The Invaders have three more games. They've been the class of the league most of the year, but then they're going to have to prove it all over again in the playoffs. Furthermore, the Invaders have led the league in attendance. Next year, the league expects to double in size. So it looks as though pro soccer in Canton is here to stay. Season's end, the Invaders led in almost every positive statistic, in wins, in home record, in away record, in defense, and in attendance. All that remained was the playoff championship, and the semifinal round opponent would be the pesky Kalamazoo Kangaroos. Despite Canton's awesome power, the fourth place Kangaroos refused to lay down in the best of five series. Game one at the Civic Center saw the Invaders build a lead, which was erased by Kalamazoo in the final moments of regulation to send matters into an overtime period. In the tense moments of sudden death, Don Tobin delivered the blow to give Canton a one nothing edge in the series. The Invaders followed with a home victory in game two, but when they arrived in Wing Stadium in Kalamazoo, they were dealt a setback in the third game by the stubborn Kangaroos. The issue was forced to a fourth game, and though Kalamazoo carried the momentum into the game, it was the Invaders who prevailed in overtime. A steal by Tim Tima created the opportunity the Invaders needed, and again it was Tobin who provided the heroics, which gave Canton a 6-5 win and advanced the Invaders into the best-of-five championship series against the Louisville Thunder. 
final round presented a stiff challenge to the invaders, not only because of the pressure which accompanies the dream of a championship, but also because Louisville had enjoyed a stunning semifinal series sweep of the Columbus Capitals. Undaunted, the invaders' offense took charge and burst to 8-2 leads in both of the first two series battles at the Civic Center, leaving the defense to secure the victories. A series sweep was within Canton's grasp, but a determined Louisville team handed the invaders their worst defeat of the season, 11-4 in the third game at Louisville. But in the fourth game, the invaders were not to be denied. In a low-scoring defensive struggle, Canton received timely goals from Art Kramer, Vic Davidson, and Don Tobin to grab a 3-1 victory and the sweet celebration of that championship season. The invaders celebrated, and so did the city of Canton. Upon the team's return from Louisville, fans greeted their champions with a party at Canton Central Plaza. Paula Stein, representing the city administration, joined in the mass congratulations for Canton's newest champions. A banquet honoring the invaders soon followed, and amidst the glow of a winning season, Invaders President Steve Paxos promised the championship was not an end, but a beginning to a dynasty in the AISA. The trophy was raised high, but when it came down, the work began for the 1985-86 season and the defense of the league title. The Invaders have continued their efforts to support the community which supported them through a youth summer soccer camp program headed by Community Relations Director Mohamed Atia, Kia, and Ken Lola. During the season, the Invaders conducted soccer demonstrations and clinics throughout the area, participated in charity events, and kept a close personal touch with their fans. These activities continue in the off-season to keep the Invaders an active part of the Canton community. Yes, the Invaders have arrived, beginning their long stay with a season most teams only dream of and continuing to build toward future success.